Last time on Drenched, we showed you what it's like living the van life in Mexico and the fantastic places it can take you, both above and below the surface. We just wave goodbye to the old Van Balam. We had some good times. We had some ups and some downs, mostly ups. Van Balam had been our trusty steed and our gateway to the wonders of the Yucatan Peninsula. She took us on a wild monkey mission to the doorstep of the Mayan underworld on a trip back in time, brought us face to face with this guy and so much more. She sheltered us on white sand beaches and gave us a home wherever we landed with her. She showed us a wild and rugged Mexico that we will never forget. So we were sad to leave her behind, but so grateful for what she had made possible for us on this trip. We were supposed to be flying home the next day, but I ended up booking a big video job at the last minute. So Nate would be heading home, and I still had a whole nother Mexican adventure ahead of me. Look at how humid it is. The lens just like instantly started fogging up. Every morning I wake up to the lovely soundtrack of the construction workers that are behind us. <laughs> but today's a pretty exciting day because I'm getting ready to start a big filming project. So um, Kush Diving, who you saw us do um, like some cenotes with, and we did the crocodile with them. They were pretty stoked about um, some of the videos that we made for them. And so they decided that they wanted to do like a video of each cenote that they dive in so that people can go on their website or in the shop and they can see all the different cenotes and decide which one they think is the coolest, that they like the best. So it should be pretty sweet and I'm super excited. Over the course of the next few days, I would have the pleasure of diving and filming in seven different cenotes. And I can say that this project really proved for me the phrase that if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. As I've said already a hundred times in the previous few episodes, diving in the cenotes is really and truly an out of this world experience. And as I explored more of a variety of sites, this only became more and more evident. I'm so excited because I'm getting ready to a dive that we wanted to do ever since we've started reading about the cenotes in Mexico. So this one is called Angelita and it's just like a massive sinkhole and when you get down there's like this really thick um, layer like a halocline of like hydrogen sulfur and so you go down there and it looks like you're just like swimming in this like river of fog. These are the kind of places that I live for and this is the reason why I love diving is just to see these incredible things that you can't even believe that they exist on Earth. Each day that passed was a new chance to jump into a reality that felt more like fantasy, to challenge myself as a diver and videographer, and develop friendships with the amazing guides that shared their corner of the globe with me. Welcome to my office. <laughs> it's a hard life, huh, Victor? Oh yeah, somebody had to do it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Like any job, it had its struggles along the way. But honestly, they weren't more than little annoyances, really. So I just wanted to share with you the, the comical setup that I've been using to ride my bike to the dive shop every day. It's pretty great. With my dive camera swaddled like a baby in the basket and my backpack full of about 35 pounds of camera gear, I made the 20 minute journey into town each day which was actually a pretty invigorating way to start the morning. My tripod just fell off my backpack and these guys were like honking at me to stop and then telling me in Spanish, but I didn't understand that they were telling me to move over to the side of the road. And I stopped and I turned around and a car pulled up and they were holding my tripod, like hanging it out the window to give it to me. So, Gracias. so lucky. Thank you to the kind people that helped me get that back. I've already got my wetsuit on. Normally I put that on last, but there's so many mosquitoes here that you couldn't even get ready without putting it on. I am sweating like a pig. One of the coolest things about diving the cenotes is just 
going to the locations, the way to the dive and getting ready for the dive is sometimes as cool as the dive. I'm going to make a whole separate video dedicated to planning your own cenote dives. But for now, I wanted to share a few highlights from each dive because they're so unbelievable and unique that I couldn't pick just one to show you. Filming the cenotes was a wrap, but I still had one more video to make to promote an event that the dive center was sponsoring, and it was a bit out of the ordinary for me, to say the least. Today is a day that I've been looking forward to for weeks now, and I'm going to be filming an event, a really special event, which is like the Mexican luchadores, so like Mexican wrestling, like Nacho Libre style with the masks. And I was obsessed with pro wrestling when I was a kid from the age of maybe, I don't know, like eight until 14. And I'm talking like next level fan, like the way that most girls were my age about Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, that's how I was about pro wrestlers. Okay, so the luchadores have just arrived and they're everything I dreamed of and more. Hola. Hola. Como estas? Bien, amiga. A gusto de estar aquí en Tulum, esperando que la afición de Tulum disfrute de una buena lucha, como lo merece el público de la península. Sí, listo. Hola, amigo, que visitas Tulum. Te invitamos a que vivas la aventura del buceo a profundidad con Kosh. Just arrived to La Gloria, Cenote, and we're gonna do how you see all the pictures of like the beautiful girls on Instagram diving in the cenotes. We're gonna recreate that with our lovely, handsome luchadores. It's beautiful down here and everybody is just loving these wrestlers like there's this whole tour group here and everybody's coming over and saying oh can I have your picture and now I'm gonna hop in with my big camera and we're gonna get some cool underwater shots we're gonna try and get these guys to uh, reenact an underwater wrestling match here like they can be like on the surface like ah okay where is the surface is it okay chicos this is for the So good. Can I have the camera underwater? 
Sofo, que si pueden luchar abajo del agua por cinco minutos. <risa> probably the most beautiful place that anybody's ever attempted to oh, film cool. luchadores. <laughs> I can't wait for the event tonight. This is going to be so amazing. <laughs> okay, we got the gang and we're headed to the wrestling match finally. I'm so excited. So we have with us today, we have Marina. Say hello. Hi. And we have Jan with us today. Hey. And Tony. Yeah, nice to meet you. And we're going to go beat up some wrestlers. That's the plan. <laughs> So yeah, I've been um, reading up a little bit today about the history of the luchadores, and apparently... It may look like professional wrestling, but the lucha libre is more than sport or theater. For Mexicans, it's almost mythic. The history of lucha libre, which translates to freestyle wrestling, dates back all the way to 1863, when Enrique Ugartechia first developed the style based on Greco-Roman traditions. Fast forward a few decades, and by 1933, when the first official organization was founded, the matches were regularly selling out in massive 17,000 seat arenas. The sport is known for its charismatic characters, fast-paced high-flying maneuvers, and spandex galore. Luchadors basically fell into two categories, rudos or technicos. The rudos were the villains, the bad guys. They represented bullies, corrupt police officers, and everything that makes life worse for everyday hardworking people. Chocolatero! 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 The Technicos were the good guys, upstanding and modest, clean fighters that were the pride of the community. Masks were an iconic part of the sport. Not all wrestlers wore masks, but for the ones who did, it was a crucial part of their identity. By concealing their identities, the fighters become more than just men. They are symbols of good and evil, right and wrong. The Lucha Libre isn't simply a sport, it's a giant morality play, myth in the making. Getting unmasked is the ultimate insult, and wrestlers will often challenge a hated opponent to battles called luchas de apuestas, or matches with wages, where the loser will be unmasked by the winner. Many wrestlers even wear their masks outside the ring, the most iconic luchador of all time, El Santo, was never seen in public without his mask. He appeared in everything from comic books to movies, always in his famous silver mask. He first came onto the scene in 1942, and it wasn't until 1984, years after his retirement, that he finally unmasked himself and revealed his identity after 42 years of concealing it. He died of a heart attack a week later, and he ended up getting buried in his mask. So we're just waiting for the wrestlers to arrive. The ring is still empty. I'd say the seats are about half full so far. And it's pretty cool because the ring is like totally homemade. Like this is just a tarp, like a blue tarp on the bottom. And the ropes are actually made out of a garden hose. Check this out. The event kicked off with a dramatic entrance to a battle royale match featuring all the luchadors. This is amazing, they're just like beating the shit out of each other. This is the best thing I've ever seen. It was easy to spot which wrestlers were the rudos and which were the technicos. Their personas, costumes, and fighting style all gave it away. Like, look at this guy. Clearly a Rudo. That guy just like body slammed him to the concrete. That was crazy. What are your first impressions? Lucha Libre is the sport of kings. Yes! Definitely. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Like, These guys are hardcore. They are. They're like, seriously hardcore. 
I didn't film it because I didn't want to be rude, but this guy like went this like backflip off the top rope thing, like landed on his chest, jumped off the side of the ring, and was just like puking his brains out and stuff. Like these guys do not mess around. You jump out of the ring like maniacs and land on each yeah. other, and you have to get out of the way quick. <laughs> That was crazy, that guy just like flew into the seats over here. He said, I, he said I had uh, huevos. huevos. There you have it, folks. Jan's Luchadore debut. You've seen it first, right here. So, my first Luchadore match was everything that I dreamed of and more. That was some of the most fun I've had in Mexico so far. <laughs> Tune in next time as I travel to the island of Holbosch for critter encounters big and small.